Okay, so, <clears throat> so our next speaker today is Gokner Ginner. She's, uh, she's a postdoctoral fellow at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research in Melbourne. And she's also the founder of Our Ladies Melbourne. And today she's going to tell us about open source bioinformatics with R and R Shiny. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So I would like to talk about open source bioinformatics with R and R Shiny. I will give an example of my own work to demonstrate how we use R uh, in bioinformatics. And I think it's going to be an example of what Martin and James already talked about. So uh, before I start with R, programming with R, I would like to talk about programming with S. S is the, uh, R actually is an implementation of S language, which is developed by uh, John Cambers and Rick Becker in back in uh, 1976 which is almost like four, uh, more than four decades ago. But uh, I want to point out some fact here because I didn't know that since uh, uh, until I've been to a conference in 2016 in San Francisco about for our users, uh, the Rick Becker was the keynote speaker who is the founder of S Language. He mentioned that there were actually two women were in the initial team of creating that language. So it was really inspiring for me. Also a bit upset that this is not an information I can find on Google. So I called, this, called the, uh, those two ladies, Jean and Judy, as first our ladies. Our ladies is the concept I'm going to tell you about at the end of my presentation. Hope it will be inspiring for the women here. So uh, R is a statistical programming language which is available as a free software since 1993, which is after 17 years or, uh, since S developed, S was developed. And it provides a wide variety of statistical anal uh, analysis methods like nonlinear modeling, mod uh, linear modeling, time series analysis, prediction. So you can do plenty uh, different type of analysis by using R. So it allows reproducible uh, reporting and the main point of R was actually when it was developed to create a publication quality uh, data and visualization. So in New Zealand, uh, Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman created their own tool to produce a better data set. And then it became the R programming language. And it is now widely used. So now there is a GUI of R, which is called R Studio. R Studio has many packages in it. So with those packages, you can produce, uh, re uh, reproduce your reports by using R Markdown and Nitter. Also, Packard gives, uh, Pack, Packard gives you the opportunity to have uh, dependency in your reporting. So you can only upload the packages you are going to need in that project and so on. And our Shiny is a really highlight of the R uh, packages. Our Shiny allows you to create an interactive report. So doesn't matter, uh, no matter how good your results are, you want your collaborator to understand your results. So to make it much uh, simply, much simple and understandable, you can use our Shiny, which I use in my work. So the biologists, my collaborators, can uh, go through their data and ask more questions themselves and just uh, analyze their data by clicking simple buttons that I've created for their data set. So uh, also data visualization package ggplot2 is very, very popular. It took the data visualization of R into a different level. Um, I write, uh, we write packages in my lab uh, because we develop tools by using statistical techniques. Uh, 
while we are writing the packages, we use the DevTools uh, package in R again, which makes everything easier. It gives you all the default files that you uh, are going to need. So let's talk about some biology. But um, this is going to be, I think, three or four slides. Hope it's not too boring for you. I will try to explain it uh, without making it super dull. So I want to talk about gene sets. So Martin and uh, James mentioned about the genes and uh, how human, every human has their own specific DNA. And we are not a lot different from each other, but this tiny little bit of code, the difference creates the illnesses, the diseases, we, and we would like to understand which part of that code creates a certain disease. So if you look at this set of genes, so each one of them is a gene, as James uh, Martin mentioned, like it is a piece of code. And in early biology, no one was interested in the interactions between those genes. Actually, it is uh, fairly new that we are now interested in the networks and the interactions between those genes. So let's say BCL2, which is the center gene, people were just interested in that gene. But now the whole uh, genes interacting with BCL2 are called the BCL family genes. So now we need to develop statistical models to analyze the whole set of genes instead of focusing on one genes. After the discovery of these interactions, there are uh, the emerge of uh, many databases uh, happened. So gene ontology, CAC string database, and many others are some of the comprehensive databases gives us this information, the interaction between genes and the networks. So what do we do with gene set tests? With gene set tests, we are interested in a set of genes. So if you look at this heat map, you can see at the left-hand side of the heat map, there are some red fields, uh, red area. So which means, uh, and this red field is just on the first experiment, which is shown at uh, pink at the top. So, so we know that the first 10 genes, for example, highly expressed in those uh, first conditions. So we can focus on those genes one by one, but we can also go and pick a set of genes, like uh, marked as biological pathway, so we can focus on those set of genes. And we need to, by using this data, we need to simulate some samples. So by simulating those samples, we are going to check if this biological pathway is more uh, prominent for the disease we are interested in. To do that, there are different techniques. One of them is a permutation technique. What we do uh, is we just shuffle all the samples and try to create uh, more and more samples representing that set of genes. But to do that, uh, we need, we, this method requires a lot of samples to be able to create a, like thousands of uh, sample sets. Therefore, there is a rotation test which is also, uh, which you can, which allow you to create like 10,000s or millions of similar type of data point. So you can, um, check if your data is really uh, differentially expressed or, or is it just random differential expression. To check that, you, you want to create many uh, samples. So with rotation tests, you can do that. But uh, the method should be really quick in bio, uh, bioinformatics as well. That's really important, as James again mentioned. Like, the fast techniques are important because you don't want to wait for days to find out which pathway is important. Sometimes you do, sometimes you have time, but if your method is more accurate and more, uh, much faster, then you go to that fast method. This is what we have done. So I want to show you our method on an example. So 
let's say Robbie, uh, who is my, uh, who is our PhD student in the division, and let's assume he is a biologist, which he seems surprised that he didn't want to, but let's assume he is. So he's interested in a problem of finding the subtypes uh, of a breast cancer. So let's say he took some breast tissue and put, transplanted that into two different mice and let it grow and then took that samples from the mice and sequenced those with the technologies again Martin mentioned. So uh, then we obtain some counts. These counts are the number of uh, like for every gene, we obtain some counts for every sample. So each gene, for example, ha had uh, like if it is really expressed, then we will observe those genes many times. So we will compare those numbers of those genes across the samples to understand which gene was active in breast cancer between different type of breast cancer. Then we will create those heat maps that I show you. So we will pick a subset of genes and then we will uh, find some p-values. Um, I assume most of you heard about p-values. I assume you, or even if you don't know, the smaller the p-value, the more significant your test is. So we would like to find the which set of genes are more significant in breast cancer between those two subtypes. So we go to those databases and pick the whole database. If you pick the whole database, you will have 4,000, 8,000 different pathways. Then it takes a while to run all these tests on those uh, these databases, pathways, and with the most commonly used method, the rotation test, it takes 20 minutes um, and it takes a lo lot of time and the p-values are all the same because it depends on the number of rotation you are using. So you would like to distinguish between which pathway is more important in breast cancer. For example, like there are uh, the first, uh, the Nikoloski breast cancer is set of genes, so you want to be able to distinguish that with the second one, but you can't do that. With the method we developed, you can get high resolution, high resolution uh, p-values, which will allow you to distinguish between different pathways, and um, also you will get these results in a really much quicker way. So I will skip that slide, but uh, the, and the method we developed, which is called FRI, it has a lower uh, number of false discoveries. So the method is more accurate and method is uh, much faster. Like gross takes like 20 minutes while you can run everything with fry in three seconds, four seconds. So this type of work is what we are trying to develop in bioinformatics. And we do all of this by using R. Um, so we use statistical techniques and use R, produce that method and compare it with the existing ones or just develop a novel method. For Fry, I also uh, created a Shiny app. So our Shiny allows you to create your web application. You can download your data set here and you can just go to any databases and pick your gene set or pick the whole database, then check which pathways are more important in a certain type of disease. So Fry web application can be found on that website. You can also find my uh, presentation on my GitHub account, which is Gokner uh, Jenner. So you can find uh, also the 
tool, fry. And yeah, if you're interested in GenSet tests, you can go and check out. Check this out. So Bioconductor is, Bioconductor provides open source software for bio, bioinformatics. And there is a uh, good amount of R packages there just to solve the problems in uh, molecular biology. So, for example, annotation databases uh, can be created in Bioconductor or single cell genomics, epigenetics, proteomics. You can find packages related to any of these fields in Bioconductor, which are written in R. So Lima is the package, uh, the most commonly, one of the most commonly used packages in Bioconductor, which we use in my lab and Agile. And these are uh, commonly used worldwide, but uh, it's developed in my lab. Uh, so if you are interested in modeling the microbiological data, just go and check this out. So let's come to Our Ladies. What Our Ladies is? Our Ladies is a global organization and uh, try to encourage women coding with R all over the world. So Our Ladies Global is created in 2012 by Gabriela from San Francisco, where I met her actually, so in 2016. Then I thought, why don't we having our ladies in Melbourne, because there were a lot of uh, women using R, uh, I know. Then I started a group here. After that, our ladies started 60 different groups all over the world. Now, there are uh, more than like thousands and thousands of women involved in this group. So, but our ladies Melbourne, what we've done so far is we, we celebrated our first year in September and we had 15 events. Three of them were just for fun and four of them were workshops and eight of them were seminars. So we had women speakers, try to encourage women speakers and already we uh, reached the 672 members. So in 2018, we would like to run some hackathons and we would like to expand to our ladies. We will have a podcast. And if you'd like to start an our ladies group, any of you in Sydney, there isn't any group in Sydney yet. So talk to us and just tweet, you can tweet me, Gokhnur Jenner. And if you'd like to sponsor our ladies, we are planning to run many more workshops, which uh, seem to be really helpful for young generation. Uh, we run workshops for high school students and university students, so you can sponsor us. So these are our speakers. We mainly have uh, women speakers, but we had support from men as well, and it is welcome. Um, so, yeah, and we will have a conference in 2018, which is an a important conference for our users. It will be in Brisbane this year. Uh, it, it happens in any countries every year. It was in Belgium the year before it was in San Francisco. and. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in R, please register for this conference. Um, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Um, thanks to my collaborators and uh, the colleagues. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please go for it. Hope it wasn't too boring. <laughs> okay, good questions for Gokner. Karen. Karen.
that uh, dynamic. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, sorry. Oh, yeah. Repeat the question. So, uh, what, what, in what capacity you can make your report uh, dynamic rather than static? Aaron was asking with using the R packages. Um, you can create an HTML uh, HTML link, and you can send that link to your collaborators, and. The, uh, it depends on how dynamic you created your website. Your collaborators can do anything you've created. So you can create like a, simply a plot which has genes on it. And then you can click on the gene and see the gene uh, reference numbers. And then you can even click on the gene and it can take you to another link uh, on the annotation databases. Or you can create interactive plots and you can recluster your genes or samples by changing some parameters based on your knowledge. So you can do anything uh, with just by whatever you can do with Java, mostly um, without knowing Java, just with your R knowledge, you will be able to uh, create those interactive websites. I find it really fascinating because I don't have time to excel in like more than two languages. We already use Linux. We already use Python sometimes and R. So if I try to learn CSS, Java, but without knowing those or with a very small knowledge of CSS, I can create that website. So, which is fine. I find really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one more question. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy your rest of the